somebody if there was anybody else there that needed me. I get we get up, we eat breakfast, we sleep half the day away because nobody wants to be in jail all day. Yeah, yeah. Not a good place to be. Not fun. So um, get up, eat the breakfast, and I go to the break room instead of going to the going back to bed. And this guy comes streaming up to me. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to have to fight this guy. Because the guards, they were showing everybody my fights online. <laughs> we had a big pod, two stories pod, open cells, and you could just roam free. And I'm thinking, these guys should be fired. Somebody's going to want to try to test me, thinking <laughs> yeah. I'm a tough guy. This is irresponsible as a, as a guard. Yeah. And here he goes. The guys, I'm like, I'm going to stand up and punch him first. Or I can let him punch me and then punch him. Yeah, and look better on the, yeah. look better on the camera. And I'm like, forget that. I stand up to punch him. And he sits down. And I'm like, cool. And he says, I got the devil in me. Could you pray with me? And I'm thinking, man, t- six hours ago I was in my bed asking God to send somebody. And wow. immediately he did. Long story short, church was a small, uh, maybe 10 by 10 break room. And the uh, first day I was there, there was... Um, there was uh, Three people in there, but I went so in right off the bat. As soon as I got, as soon as I got saved, the guy, the drug dealer, drug using alcoholic, led me to the Lord. The people that were in in the call center had led most of them to the Lord, and we could all go to church and get paid. We could leave Wednesday early and sure. still get paid if we would go to church. Wow. So he's paying people to go to church, <laughs> and he's leading people to the Lord. That's and then awesome. he's and he's at the bar with us. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, at, at the weekend. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, but I was I, I was a soul winner, or I would go soul winning. And I remember that Sunday, first Sunday, three people being in church. The next Sunday, I went around tapping people, let's go to church. First guy said no. Second guy said, wake me up again. I'm going to stab you with my pencil. <laughs> Third guy said yes. A couple guys said yes. By the time I was done with those 30 days, the last 15 days, that church was overflowing with people. On the top end of the pod, there was a Bible study. On the bottom end of the pod, there was wow. a Bible study. They said it was the first time in 30 days in that maximum security holding facility that there was not somebody being taken out of there for violence or yeah. or, or whatever. They, wow. They Described it as peaceful and like, you know, awesome. I was doing this, I was doing that. And I thought, man, that's not me, that's God. And right. if God can do that with me in here, what can he do with me out there? So I just got out and just witnessed to witness, witness to people. That's incredible, man. That's that's a crazy story. I, I've heard parts of that, but I don't think I've ever heard, you know, heard all that together. But that's really. Um, and so you, you talked about then um, while you were there they were showing some videos of your fights. So like on that end of things, you know, I wouldn't say non-spiritual, but like when did you get into I guess organized fighting. I got home. Organized fighting, exactly. Yep, <laughs> sure. I got home from college, and I lived with my parents for like a month, and then I got an apartment and a job. And I uh, remember they they built a weightlifting facility below where I lived, and then and next to that was an MMA gym. And I would go lift weights. I thought them guys were idiots. I was like, who wants to get punched in the face for money? <laughs> yeah. Then my motto changed from I'd rather punch a face than a clock. But I would go, and I would lift weights. I developed a relationship with the fighters. I would go watch them fight. I figured, I oh, mean, I could do this. I figured I was going to train for a year and then yeah. fight. I trained for two months, and then I fought. Um, we could fight every Friday if we would go to uh, gentlemen At the gentlemen's club, you could fight every Friday. Okay. Um, and this was, this, was, this was before I was saved. This right, was 2007. Right. Um, and I just started. I won the first fight. I won the second fight, and they had me gave me this title fight against this big white guy. Big country was his name. Uh, <laughs> to you know, and I said, I know why you want me to fight. You, he's got this. He's got like seven more fights in me. I'm big. He's big. It's gonna look good on the poster. You're gonna sell tickets. <laughs> yeah. I said I'll fight him though. I don't care. And I uh, I lost by one point. I lost the decision. Wow. Uh, that was the only time I ever went to a full a full length of a fight. Wow. Um, and it was only nine minutes because it was amateur rounds. Sure. But uh, that's that's kind of how I just got into fighting there. Interesting. Um, and so then uh, you, of course, went to the went to thirty days in jail. There, got saved, came out. Yeah, were you? I was saved. Oh yeah, yeah. Then right, I had right, right, a good right, time. Right, right. Sometimes you know your past catch up to, with you. Absolutely. I've been to jail. I've been to jail two times after I was saved. The second time after I, I went to jail was from something that happened in, like, oh, well, whatever. I'll tell the story. So my, my daughter's mom got a, um, she had a baby, and she was like, I need you to start paying $700 a month child support. And I'm like, and it was already at, it was at like 400 or something, yeah. which is plenty. And I, I, 
I paid some. I didn't pay some. I always paid some. I didn't always pay the whole amount, but I, but I was paying some. And uh, um, I'm like, you're crazy. And then so she took me to court. And my attorney, he didn't charge me for the last four times that I had to come out there. He said, this is nonsense. Yeah. I said, I'm trying to get their attorney just to drop it and see how nonsense it is. And that's what the attorney was trying to convince her to do, her attorney. And then she d- did some of her own digging in. There was a, there was a, like in 2006 or something, I, I didn't make a full payment after I had made an agreement to, to pay a certain amount. So I was held in contempt and the, my, my, my attorney says, we're going to go, we're going to get this stone out. Oh, so the first thing that they did was they said, right now, actually you're paying too much child support. So they lowered it oh, well. and that just got her all fired <laughs> <I> up. <bet. laughs> and she's a great woman. She's a great mother. She's a, she's a great uh, person. Um, but she was going through. Yeah, but if you're you going, know. if you're going for that kind yeah. of thing, that would that would irritate me if I was in that sure, situation. Sure, sure, so sure, I get sure. That. So um, she, um, you know, at all of this, we grew through all of this, and we we're better co-parents because of all this. And the main reason is because I didn't get bitter through it all. I just I just saw that God had a God had a purpose, and yeah. this is this is this is actually a. Uh, anyways, I'll just continue. So uh, I get there and. The judge, she gave me like, she gave me um, 30 days. I'm like, and I'm preaching. And I'm like, judge, so listen, you're telling me, I just started preaching. I'm like, you're telling me that, he said, said, here's who I am now. Here's who I was then. And I'm not, I'm not joking. I'm not kidding. I said, I got this, I got to preach here and I'm going to preach here. She says, so when are the dates? Where's it at? And I'm like, can I get my phone? I'll give you all all the dates. And then I gave her that and I said, would you like a phone number too? So what she did was she knocked it down until like the day before I had to be to where I was or two days before to where I had to be to where I was. And some of the people in jail actually were, um, I was going to be preaching in Minneapolis at Pastor Dave Baker's and some of the people were, and that I was in jail with from around there. Yeah. And I told them when I was preaching, I told them the story and they, um, they came to hear me preach That's that awesome. day. Uh, but, um, so She's all crying. She's all pregnant. The judge or my lawyer said she made an emotional decision. And it is what I was like, it is what it is. So yeah. I just went and uh, I get there day one. There's like, these guys having this prayer circle. And it was just like this fooey prayer circle. So I stepped in and I, I asked them about salvation. And um, like most of the people backed out. A couple of people stepped in. Like four guys got saved. And then the next day, the, the first guy that came to church at where I was at, I was, talk, I was witnessing to him. And he said... Uh, he just didn't get it. He he was going to heaven because he was a good person. Mm. So he ended, and I said, man, you're, you're going to go to hell. And I seen him the next day. I said, are you still on your way to hell? And he said, I told you, I'm going to heaven. I'm a good person. And I said, I told you, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. I am means he is, not you. And the light went off, boom. And then he got saved. Wow. And then uh, we finally get into our pods where we're going to be staying at. And uh, church on Sunday People, some people knew me from TV. Some people knew me from this. Some people knew me from that. And I was like, here's what I'm here. I said, don't think that I think that I'm, I'm an inmate pre- preaching to inmates, but uh, I'm going to preach on Sunday. And then the, 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 the place filled up and I That's preached and people got saved. And Amen. then we were having this Bible study and uh, or we would have a, the prayer circle every night. Um, and I remember walking through, walking through, walking through and seeing people uh there's one man, he was always in his Bible. And I would always tell him, I was leading people to the Lord on a daily basis. And I would tell him, another man got saved, another man got saved. And he was always looking at me funny. And then one time I said that, and he said, what do you mean saved? I said, you don't know what it means to be saved? <laughs> so what are you doing? All these, all, you're in the Bible. Yeah, all this. Yeah. So I sat him down, I, I went through the scripture, and I said, now what I need to do is teach you how to do that to other people. Yeah. After this time you're spending here in this book, you can be spending doing that. And there was another guy that always came to the Bible study, a black guy. So I took the black guy and him, and I told him, you know, here's here's what you do. Here's the scripture. Write this scripture. Write this page number so it can get you directly to your next scripture. You know, just explain to him. Yeah. And then um, also as I was leaving, the prayer circle got got pretty solid. And I remember we had that we had the we had the trailer park. That's where all the white people sat. Then we had the hood. That's where all the black people sat. Then we had the country. That's where like just people who didn't really have a they weren't they sure. didn't have a click, but they were they were fine set. And then there was like all the off-brand people, if you will, set in, in this other end. Um, 
And I asked the leader of the Crips, I said, can you bring your people to the, to the prayer circle tonight? Because most of the, a lot of the people came. And uh, this guy comes in late, late at, right when I'm giving the gospel. And he's got his hands in his pants. His teeth are all, like, bucked out because he sucks his thumb. Two-time murderer. Like, tough guy sucking wow. his thumb. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, and isn't it a shame that some of you people are going to live the rest of your lives in prison. Some think you're going to get out, but you're not. You're not. And I pointed at him in his face because he tried to come into my prayer circle <laughs> and disrupt it. And uh, it was like me versus the Crips. But they were just respectful to the Lord. Like, yeah. I can remember, yeah. like, being back in Chicago and talking to folks. And they're like, yeah, if, even if we're in a shootout, man, shoot, shoot, shoot. Pause as you pass the, pass as you pass the church and then back to it. Wow. You know, so they have yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but, but that man, he, 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 he backed up after I said that. And he was, he, he was one of the, I think, 14 men that trusted Christ that wow. night in a prayer circle. And I can remember having, uh, Christmas, we spend in jail in Christmas. Sometimes, um, you spend jail in Christmas. Nobody out here listening to this is not above being put to jail. We're all one bad decision That's right. um, away. So anyways, the man. Or, or I, I preached and I preached Christmas and we had people saved and we had great testimonies, people crying. A, a, a chaplain came in one time and he, I'm bouncing all over the place, but a chaplain came in and he was preaching on, uh, I don't remember the message he preached. I just remember him talking about being saved. Yeah. And I remember him giving like a strong salvation without giving a strong salvation. And then he ended the thing and I said, hold on, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me say something. Because I was answering all the, some of the questions people weren't answering, this right. and the other. And he was taking note. And I, I went through the gospel. And this big, burly, tough guy, he, 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 he ended up getting saved. And somebody else ended up getting saved. And the guy just couldn't believe, like, that uh, I was witnessing the people in the prayer circle. And I couldn't believe that he couldn't believe that I was witnessing <laughs> the people. At a, or not a prayer circle, but at a Bible study. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, no, it's the same thing with churches now, though. You know? Yeah. It always surprises you the people who are are sitting in the pew but aren't aren't trusting Christ. No doubt trust about themselves. it. No doubt about it. Yeah, we'll be, these preachers say we'll be surprised who's there and who's yeah. not there. Man, those last, are some incredible stories. You, you got a little more? One, one last thing, okay. one last thing. Yeah. So I had the, I had the, or two things. I had that Bible circle and it was a solid, we had, we, were, we were only using King James stuff and it was a good solid Bible study and I, I remember this big guy, he said these horns on his head, bald man, he was always in there. He was, he was running the circle until I came. Oh, okay. But I was getting ready to leave and I wanted the circle to stay solid I said, you're going to take it over, man. You're going to give devotion every night. And he's like, okay. And then the next day he was, he was too scared to give the devotion. <laughs> and, uh, I, I said, man, tell me what you read in the Bible the next day. And, and, and he told me, I said, what'd that do for you? I said to him and he told me, I said, that's all you got to do. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then the next day he did it. So that's good. That was neat. So there's a lot more, but we'll end there. No, that's all good stuff, man. I, you maybe should write a book or something. Tell <laughs> that's about what everybody said. Yeah, man. I just don't think people are going to pick them up and read them. Uh, so this whatever. Well, this is a good opportunity for people not to have to pay for it. They just get to listen <laughs> to your story, so that's real good. Um, so about you know, like you're, you, you said you're in and out of jail a couple of times. You're you're growing up. You're in a couple of different homes. You know, dealing with all these things. How does that shape your perspective on like now that you're a parent, you're a husband? Like, how does that affect you? Um, affection and love. You know, no matter what my son's doing, you know, he's he's 15, tough guy. You know, I put my arm around him. He give, keep his arm down, you know, and just <laughs> yeah. put his buddies, and yeah. or I get you, get him a pair of shoes, you know. You didn't, well, you, we just got you this, and you acting like this. Well, you didn't have to give me that, you know. It's sure, like, yeah, whatever. Like I don't need you type of stuff, whatever. But I'm still just, I still just love him and uh, tell him that I love him, kiss him on the forehead, and you know, it's definitely shaped me there as far as um, the voids that I had growing up. Yeah. I have to try to keep those filled so my kid don't have to go through those. Um, like I said, my parents, they did, a, they did a good job, but there was, there was a lot they could have did differently that would have that would have helped me out. But financially, they were there. And, you know, right, I, I, right. I want to I I be there for them financially. And, like, little things, like, I, I don't think that my kids should have to pay for their sports shoes or that their sports shoes should be part of their Christmas present. And if you are a parent that think that, that's nothing wrong with that. But <laughs> yeah, that's how yeah. I was raised, right. so I'll, I, I do that. Like, or like, and since I was raised that way, when my kids go to camp, like a football camp or any kind of camp, I'm not. I don't. I don't. I do what I can do to get the money for them to yeah. go there. I don't want them to have to sure. pay to go to something where God's gonna 
fork in their life. And I don't think there's anything wrong. You know, you know your kids. And yeah, if they need to do kids, the work.